The next item on the agenda is an information item on the 2015 Regulatory Oversight Report for Uranium Mines, Mills, Historic and Decommissioned Sites in Canada, as outlined in CMD 16M49 and 16M49.A. The public was invited to comment in writing. Um, November 14, 2016 was the deadline set for filing um, intervention. Representatives from the licensees are here with us today, so welcome. And uh, they will get the opportunity to comment, as usual. Uh, also available to answer questions via video conference from our Saskatoon office, we have representative from the government of Saskatchewan and uh, Dr. James Irvine from the Population Health Unit. Hi, I, I can see you now. <laughs> um, this presentation will be done in two parts. Part one addresses the operation of operating uranium mines and mills, and after a break we will resume with the rest of the report. So I'll turn the floor now to staff, and uh, Ms. Tadros, the floor is yours. So if I may, Mr. President, could I do a roll call for the people on teleconference to see who we have with us? Okay. Thank you. So I'll start with the list I've been provided. So Mr. Andy Poole with EWL Management. Are you with us, sir? Mr. Paul Brugger from Barrick Gold. No, that's for the second presentation. Second part only, so they're not online at the moment? Okay. So let's proceed then. I'll do the roll call for the second part then. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Heidi Tadros. I'm the Director General of the Directorate of Nuclear Cycle and Facilities Regulation. With me to support for this presentation are Mr. Robert Lloyd, Director of the Uranium Mines and Mills Division, Ms. Corrine Glenn, Director of Waste and Decommissioning Division, Ms. Nancy Greencorn, Project Officer in the Uranium Mines and Mills Division, and Ms. Karina Lang, Project Officer of the Waste and Decommissioning Division. We also have a number of colleague licensing and compliance staff, as well as subject matter experts with us here in Ottawa and in Saskatoon, as noted, by video conference to help answer any questions the Commission may have. We are here to present Commission Member Document 16M49, entitled Regulatory Oversight Report for Uranium Mines, Mills, Historic and Decommissioned Sites in Canada for 2015. The CNSC currently produces a number of regulatory oversight reports as shown on this slide and as you saw this morning. This is the fifth ROR that CNSC staff presented to the Commission in public proceedings this year. The 2015 Regulatory Oversight Report for Uranium Mines, Mills, Historic and decommissioned sites presents CNSC staff's assessment of the performance of operating, active remediation, and decommissioned uranium mines and mills in Canada. This is the fifth annual regulatory oversight report on operating mines and mills presented to the Commission. The public has been invited to comment and participate on each of these annual reports. The scope of the 2015 annual report has been expanded to include active remediation projects and decommissioned sites. This report includes an introduction that summarizes the CNSC's regulatory efforts at the uranium mine and mill sites, including the independent environmental monitoring program and public information and community engagement. Also included in the introduction are lessons learned from the Mount Pauli event. The report is then organized by operating facilities, active remediation projects and decommissioned sites. For each of these sites, the report includes licensee information on operation and major developments in 2015, CNSC staff's safety and control area performance rating, and detailed performance rating on the three safety and control areas of radiation protection, environmental protection, and conventional health and safety, which provide the key performance indicators for these sites. So on this slide, what I'd like to do before continuing the presentation is draw your attention to a few errors in the CMD 16M49 that we noted after the submission deadline had passed. On page 10, table 
the 2015 MacArthur River authorized annual production of 8.1 mega kilogram uranium per year is incorrect. MacArthur River was approved for 9.6 mega kilogram uranium per year in April of 2015. On page 10, table 2.1, the 2015 MacArthur River total mining tonnage is incorrect at 86,772 tons. The total mining tonnage is 88,236 tons of ore mined in 2015. And finally, table A3 on page 155 does not include a reference to the change made to the MacArthur River License Condition Handbook in 2015. The License Condition Handbook Revision 2 was issued on April 2, 2015 and included revised working in Part 1, Section 2.4 to allow an annual production of up to the 9.6 megakilograms per year. These changes do not impact CNSC staff's overall conclusion on the performance of the facilities discussed in the report. These errors and any minor errors that are noted throughout this presentation will be corrected in the final version. Once again, we do apologize for any confusion. The CNSC awarded $19,672 in funds through the CNSC's participant funding program for reviewing the 2015 ROR on uranium mines and mills. The fund the funds were awarded to the Saskatchewan Environmental Society in collaboration with the Athabasca Chippeway First Nation and Mr. Rodney Gardner. Four interventions were received on this ROR and are listed on this slide. Our presentation today starts with an overview of the CNSC's risk-informed regulatory oversight activities listed on this slide followed by the relevant aspects of the Eastern Athabasca Regional Monitoring Program and lessons learned on the Mount Polly event. In line with the Regulatory Oversight Report, the presentation is then grouped by the operating facilities, active remediation projects, and decommissioned sites. For each, we will present the licensee's 2015 operational highlights, as well as CNC staff's regulatory efforts, safety performance ratings, and conclusions. I will now the, pass the presentation to Mr. Robert Lloyd. Good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the committee. Robert Lloyd, and I'm the Director of the Uranium Mines and Mills Division at the CNSC. The CNSC regulates Canada's uranium mines, mills, historic, and the commission sites to protect the health, safety, and security of Canadians and the environment. The CNSC delivers its mandate using risk-informed regulatory oversight through licensing, verification, enforcement, and reporting activities, which include on-site inspection, desktop reviews, technical assessments, reviews of licensee reports, and ongoing exchange of information. The nature of the oversight is commensurate with the risk associated with the licensed site, the risk associated with the activity of, or program, and the performance of the licensees. The base level of risk is reflected in the CNC staff's facility-specific compliance plans, which include the number and scope of inspections. These plans are regularly reviewed and, if need be, revised. CNC staff evaluate licensees' performance using topical safety and control areas, SCAs. The 14 safety and control areas are common to all CNC licensees, but relative importance of each SCA is related to the type of operation being regulated. While in the case of mines and mills, we focus on environmental protection, radiation safety, and conventional health and safety, CNC staff assess licensees' performance on all 14 SCAs for the operating mines and mills, and where applicable for the active remediation projects and decommissioned sites. Licensees' performance is rating for each SCA as either fully satisfactory, satisfactory, below expectations, or unacceptable. CNC staff assign ratings based on the results of oversight activities for a given SCA and its component parts. Performance is based on meeting set criteria such as defined metrics, the level of program implementation, events and licensee action in response to events, as well as the nature of the events themselves. Each SCA comprises several specific areas that define its key components. For example, the conventional health and safety SCA consists of the specific areas of performance, practices and awareness. 
CNC staff consider all the factors and multiple inputs and assign a reading that best represents licensee performance in a holistic manner. Staff will now discuss regulatory limits and action levels. <clears throat> Radiation regulatory limits are established to limit the dose received to workers and members of the public. Controlled environmental regulatory release limits are established to limit the quantity of nuclear and hazardous substances released into the environment and are based on the regulatory dose limit for the public. Action levels are set by licensees using national and international guidance on best practices. These levels are part of the radiation and environmental protection programs forming part of the operating licenses. Action levels are designed to alert licensees before regulatory limits are reached. The Iranian Mines and Mills regulations define action levels a specific dose of radiation or other parameter that, if reached, may indicate a loss of control of parts of a licensee's radiation protection program or environmental protection program, and so triggers a requirement for specific action to be taken. An action level exceedance requires the licensee to notify the CNC, perform an immediate investigation, and carry out subsequent corrective actions and prevent the measures to restore the effectiveness of the program. The following slide will provide a graphic representation of regulatory limits and action levels. This graph shows a representation of relationships between the regulatory limit, action level, and concentration or dose within the normal ranges of operation. The regulatory limit is a concentration or dose that may be exceeded, <clears throat> that may, if exceeded, warrant enforcement action. It is shown as the red line in the graph, and licenses must during normal operation, remain at all times below the regulatory limit. The concentration of those within the range of normal operation, as well as the administrative level, is shown as the green region of the graph. Exceedance of an administrative level indicates that an operating parameter is at the upper range of normal operations. Such an event triggers an internal review by the licensee. Exceedance of an action level, shown as the yellow line, is a concentration or dose that may indicate a potential loss of control of part of a licensee's program. The CNSC is advised of action level exceedances, but it's important to recognize that an exceedance of an action level does not imply a potential risk to the people or the environment, but it identifies that the operating parameter may be outside of the norm based on facility design. Licensees are responsible for identifying the parameters of the program that represent timely indicators of potential loss of control. For this reason, action levels are licensee specific and may change over time depending on operational conditions and location. To keep the public informed of regulatory activities occurring at mines and mills, CNC staff regularly engage with the public, indigenous groups, and their leadership through attendance at community meetings, site tours, and technical information sessions. In addition to these outreach activities, the CNC also provides information through its website, social media, and CNC online, and also communicates with indigenous leadership and representatives on a regular basis through phone, email, fax, and letter. <clears throat> <clears throat> for example, for the Gunner Remediation Project in 2015, staff hosted a workshop with interested Indigenous communities to discuss the Saskatchewan Research Council's remediation plans for the Gunner site and help them prepare for their participation in the Commission hearing held in September 2015. Licensees continue to have in place public information programs to engage communities and keep them informed of the overall performance out of any major developments at uranium mines and mills. These programs are regularly reviewed and verified by CNC staff. To complement existing and ongoing compliance activities, the CNC implemented its Independent Environmental Monitoring Program, IEMP, designed to verify that, that the public and environment around CNC regulated nuclear sites um, are safe. This verification is achieved through independent sampling and analysis by CNC staff of the air, water, soil, vegetation, and various foods. A five-year plan for IEMP at operating uranium mines and mills was established in 2015. As part of this plan, a sampling campaign took place around McLean Lake operation in the summer of 2016. CNC staff are currently developing the sampling cycle and plan for the remediation and recommission sites. During 2015, a three to five year cycle plan at the Denison and Realgum sites was developed. Samples were collected around the city of Elliott Lake and the Serpent River watershed. The results from, from the IMP demonstrate that the licensee's environmental protection programs are effective and indicate that the public and environment in the vicinity of these sites 
are protected. Detailed results are, protect, uh, are provided on the CNSC's IMP webpage. Complementary to the IMP, the, the Eastern Athabasca Regional Monitoring Program was initially established in 2011, building on previous cumulative effects monitoring programs. In partnership with the government of Saskatchewan, industry and Saskatchewan communities, the program monitors the safety of traditional harvested country foods from representative communities located in northern Saskatchewan. The intent of the program is to evaluate the quality of country foods to assess any potential impacts resulting from industrial activities in and outside of Saskatchewan and to provide confidence to community members that traditional country foods remain safe to eat and for future generations. CNC staff support the ER, EARMP and are working towards opportunities to collaborate on this valuable program. The study gives good representation and assurance that country foods are safe to eat, the water quality is safe to drink, and the environment is protected. The following slides will provide information on the lessons learned from the failure of a dam at the Mount Polly gold mine. As previously presented to the Commission in October 2014, breach of a dam at a gold mine released a large quantity of contaminated water and tailing slurry into the environment. This prompted the CNEC to issue written requests to facilities with above ground tailing storage to reevaluate the safety of the dam. In addition to the work carried out by licensees in response to the CNEC information request, which concluded their tailing management facility re facilities remain valid. Um, Dams were in good condition and in no danger of breach of failure. Staff also carried out a series of activities to confirm the work done by licensees and further inform their knowledge. The activities carried out by staff include conducting focused geotechnical inspections of all dam structures at licensed sites in 2014 and 2015, the review of the root cause analysis of the Mount Pauly event, as well as dam safety assessments. A review of CNC requirements did not result in any changes. Based on their inspections and desktop reviews, CNC staff conclude that all CNC regulated dams are in good condition and perform as designed. The dams are not at risk of a dam breach similar to what occurred at Mount Polly, as they are better designed, maintained, and inspected. While the simple lesson learned is that our licensees are doing a good job, so there's, there were no immediate regulatory actions identified, nevertheless, CNC staff continue to be vigilant and ensure that all best practices are being incorporated into operations, inspections, and future licensing submissions. I will now pass the presentation over to Ms. Nancy Greencorn. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the Commission. My name is Nancy Greencorn, and I'm a project officer in the Uranium Mines and Mills Division at the CNSC. The presentation will now transition to focus on operating uranium mine and mill facilities. This section will review operational highlights at individual facilities in 2015, followed by CNSC staff's performance rating, assessments, and conclusions thereof. There are currently five operating uranium mine and mill facilities in Canada, all located in the Athabasca Basin in northern Saskatchewan. Chemico operates the Cigar Lake Mine, MacArthur River Mine, Rabbit Lake Mine and Mill, and Key Lake Mill, while Arriva operates the McLean Lake Mill. The picture on the right of this slide shows the Cigar Lake Mine. Chemico's Cigar Lake operation is the world's second largest known high-grade uranium deposit. Uranium ore mined at Cigar Lake operation is ground into ore slurry, loaded into containers, and shipped by truck to the McLean Lake Mill. Chemico's Cigar Lake license is valid from July 2nd, 2013 to June 30th, 2021. At the Cigar Lake operation during 2015, commissioning activities for ore preparation, storage, and handling processes were completed. On May 22, 2015, the Cigar Lake operation formally announced that it had met all criteria necessary to achieve commercial production targets. In addition, in June of 2015, a third jet boring system was commissioned. 
Surface construction activities at the Cigar Lake operation included upgrades to the modular freeze plant. Cameco's MacArthur River operation is the world's largest high-grade uranium mine. High-grade uranium ore is mined, mixed with water, and ground in a ball mill to form slurry and pumped to the surface. The ore slurry is loaded into specifically designed containers and transported to the Key Lake Mill. The picture on the right of this slide shows the surface facilities at the MacArthur River Mine. Cameco's MacArthur River license is valid from November 1st, 2013 to October 31st, 2023. During 2015, the MacArthur River operation focused on underground development for our ongoing ore production and ground freezing continued to ensure the effective control of groundwater. As well, mine exploration and development of ore production zones continued. The picture on this slide shows the Rabbit Lake facility. Cameco's Rabbit Lake facility has been in operation since 1974 and has both a mine and a mill. Cameco's Rabbit Lake license is valid from November 1, 2013 to October 31, 2023. Mining and milling activities continued at Rabbit Lake throughout 2015. In early 2016, Cameco announced the start of a prolonged period of care and maintenance, suspending both mining and milling operations at Rabbit Lake. Care and maintenance activities have been put in place to ensure safety and protection of the environment, workers, and the public. Reclamation activities continued in 2015 in accordance with the approved reclamation plan. Cameco's Key Lake Mill is the world's largest producer of yellow cake. The picture on the right of this slide shows the Key Lake Mill operation. Cameco's Key Lake Mill is valid, license is valid from November 1st, 2013 to October 31st, 2023. In July of 2014, the Commission accepted the Environmental Assessment Report for the Key Lake Extension Project. This allowed an increase in the annual urani uranium production rate and an increase in the elevation of tailings disposal within the existing tailings management facility. In 2015, Cameco's Key Lake operation continued to mill MacArthur River high-grade ore and the operation continued to optimize recently installed equipment. In January and February of 2015, two Key Lake mill events resulted in exceedances of the weekly dose action levels and were, were reported to the Commission as event initial reports. These events were related to malfunctions and component failures with the existing vertical calciner. CNSC staff conducted inspections immediately after each of the two Key Lake calciner events and later followed up with additional compliance verification inspections of the events and assess the corrective actions as acceptable. Following the February event, CNSC staff issue requests according to subsection 12.2 of the General Nuclear Safety and Controls Regulation to all operating mills in order to obtain the following information. Design and operational features that help prevent unplanned releases of yellow cake, Equipment, processes, and procedures that monitor and identify any weakening of containment systems that might lead to unplanned releases of yellow cake. Radiation monitoring equipment and procedures that will quickly identify any unplanned releases of yellow cake. And report corrective actions and implementation schedules for short-term and long-term measures to address any significant gaps. CNSC staff reviewed and accepted the licensee's responses, lessons learned, corrective actions plans to the 12-2 requests. In September of 2016, the CNSC sent letters to Cameco and Arriva formally verifying acceptance of the actions taken in response to the 12-2 requests. 
Although the 12-2 responses have been accepted as satisfactory, CNSC staff will continue to monitor the CalSigner and drying operations through compliance inspections and reviews. This update closes Commission Action Number 8486. The picture on the right of this slide shows the McLean Lake Mill operation. The McLean Lake Mill has been designed to process high-grade Cigar Lake ore. A license was issued in July of 2009, amended in 2012, and expires on June 30, 2017. Arriva's McLean Lake suspended milling operations in July of 2010 due to lack of ore. Restart of production at the McLean Lake Mill began in September of 2014, processing Cigar Lake ore slurry. Ramp up of production continued throughout 2015. As stated in the previous slide, the McLean Lake license expires in 2017. A request for a license renewal has been submitted to the CNSC and a public hearing for the license renewal is scheduled for June of 2017. To ensure compliance at the operating mine and mill facilities, CNSC staff conducted 30 inspections in 2015. The estimated staff person days or regulatory effort to plan, execute and report these 30 inspections is displayed on this slide as person days for compliance. Also shown on this slide is the person days for licensing activities at each of the five operating facilities. The 30 inspections resulted in one directive, 33 action notices and 42 recommendations. No orders were issued at the operating facilities in 2015. Findings from these inspections were provided to the licensees immediately in preliminary reports and followed by detailed inspection reports. All enforcement actions arising from the findings were recorded in the CNSC Regulatory Information Bank to ensure all enforcement actions are tracked to completion. CNSC staff have reviewed, verified and accepted the licensee's responses and corrective actions. All 2015 enforcement actions have now been closed. The 2015 performance ratings for each of the 14 safety and control areas determined by CNSC staff based on regulatory oversight activities are shown on this slide. For 2015, the operating uranium mine and mill facilities received a satisfactory performance rating across all safety and control areas. As mentioned earlier, the three key performance indicators for these facilities are radiation protection, environmental protection, and conventional health and safety. The following slides will, provi will provide detailed performance reporting for these three SCAs. The primary sources of radiation exposure at uranium mines and mills comes from gamma radiation, long-lived radioactive dust, radon progeny, and radon gas. As part of routine and focused compliance activities, CNSC staff verified and confirmed that licensees have effective radiation protection programs and practices to monitor and control radiological hazards. CNSC staff concluded radiation doses were kept as low as reasonably achievable and workers were being protected. This graph shows the maximum and average individual effective doses measured for nuclear energy workers news, at each of the five uranium mine and mill facilities during 2015. The annual maximum individual effective dose for NUS at the five facilities was well below the annual regulatory limit of 50 millisieverts. The five operating facilities had the same maximum radiological action levels for NUS of one millisievert per week or five millisieverts per quarter of a given year. In 2015, 
radiation protection accident level exceedances occurred at the Key Lake operation, MacArthur River operation, and McLean Lake operation. There were no radiation protection action level exceedances at Rabbit Lake or the Cigar Lake operation in 2015. CNSC staff assessed and were satisfied with the actions taken by the operations to address these action level exceedances. As part of routine and focused compliance activities, CNSC staff verified and confirmed that licensees have effective environmental programs to monitor and control the protection of the environment. In 2015, no environmental regulatory limits or action levels were exceeded at the operating uranium mines and mills. CNSC staff's compliance activities verified that the environment was being protected in 2015. Licensees are required to report to the CNSC and any other regulatory authorities any unauthorized release of hazardous substances or nuclear materials to the environment. The number of reportable spills in 2015 at each of the uranium mine and mill facilities is displayed on this slide. For each of these spills, the licensee investigated cause and implemented corrective actions to remediate and prevent a reoccurrence. CNSC rated all spills in 2015 at mine and mill facilities as low significance and all spills were mitigated, leaving no residual impact to the environment. CNSC found that the licensee's reporting and the responses to environmental spills during 2015 was acceptable. This slide displays treated effluent annual average concentrations in 2015 for the five operating mine and mill facilities. All metal mines and mills in Canada are subject to the Metal Mining Effluent Regulation, MMER of the Federal Fisheries Act. As shown, all annual average concentrations are well below MMER discharge limits and the site-specific action levels. This slide displays the treated effluent annual average concentrations in 2015 for radium, selenium, and uranium at the five operating mine and mill facilities. I will note an error on this slide. The Rabbit Lake uranium level should read 0.052 milligrams per liter. The correct value is found in the regulatory oversight report. As shown, all facilities are below the applicable license release limit and site-specific action levels. CNSC staff are satisfied that treated effluent concentrations at the uranium mine and mill facilities are protective of the environment. On this slide, effluent quality compliance data for uranium mines and mills is compared to base metal, precious metal, and iron mines. Compliance with the MMER provides a good environmental performance indicator across the metal mining industry. This table illustrates the number of mines in each mining sector that are out of compliance with at least one MMER parameter in 2014 and also provides specific information on the individual parameters that are out of compliance. Data presented on this slide comes from Environment and Climate Change Canada and is provided for the year 2014 as is most current information available. In 2015, the uranium sector was in full compliance with the provisions of the MMER for all regulated parameters and compares well to the other metal mining sectors. This slide shows radionuclide concentrations measured in ambient air at uranium mines and mills in 2015. High volume air samplers are used to collect and measure total suspended particulate in air, and the particulate samples are also analyzed for metal and radionuclide concentrations. Concentrations of lead 210, radium 226, thorium 230, and uranium are below the referenced annual air quality levels. 
CNSC staff confirm all uranium mine and mill facilities demonstrate strong performance, mitigating atmospheric effects on their operations, on the environment, and conduct regular air quality monitoring. CNSC staff concluded that the results indicate no risk to the environment from atmospheric releases and that the environment was protected. Lost time injury statistics are a key measure of licensee performance for conventional health and safety. A lost time injury is a workplace incident that results in a worker being unable to return to work for a period of time. CNSC staff also consider the, consider the injury's frequency and the severity rating. CNSC staff and Saskatchewan's Ministry of Labour Relations and Workplace Safety monitor and review each reportable injury to ensure that cause is identified and satisfactory corrective actions are taken. CNSC staff confirmed that the operating mine and mill facilities implemented effective management of conventional health and safety in their activities. For 2015, CNSC staff confirmed that all operating uranium mine and mill facilities continued to have satisfactory performance in all safety and control areas. The licensee's radiation protection measures were effective in keeping doses as low as reasonably achievable. Their environmental protection programs were effective at protecting the environment. And their conventional health and safety programs continued to protect the workers. CNSC staff conclude that each regulated facility operated safely and met performance expectations with respect to the health and safety of persons and for the protection of the environment and to Canada's international obligations. I'll now return the presentation to Ms. Heidi Tedros. Thank you, Heidi Tedros. For the record, I believe we're going to break at this point and uh, take uh, questions or move to the licensees' presentations. So before we proceed with the second part, I'd like to now do the roll call of the uh, people that uh, may have been able to join us. So I'd like to verify if the representatives from the Ontario Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change, either Mrs. Uh, Farron or Mr. Dagelis, are you with us? Yes, it's uh, Trevor Dagelis. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, about uh, Mr. Reitzel from the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines. No, we'll try you later. Uh, Madame uh, Mrs. Uh, Berthelot from BHP Billiton. Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Andy Poole with EWL Management. Mr. Paul Brugger from Barry Gold. Mr. Ian Wilson or Ms. Kai Kettelson or Mr. Chris Reed from the Saskatchewan Research Council. Uh, Ian Wilson is here on the call. Thank you very much. Mr. Ron Bredmore with Indigenous and Northern Affairs Canada. Yes, I'm still here. Thank you very much. And Ms. Janet Lowe with Denison Environmental. Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Okay, back to staff uh, for the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Heidi Chadros, for the record. So this section provides information on CNSC's oversight of uranium mine and mill sites undergoing remediation and sites that have been decommissioned and are under long-term care and maintenance. This part of our presentation provides background information and performance highlights for 2015 for the active remediation projects followed by the decommissioned sites. This map shows the locations of active remediation projects and decommissioned uranium mine and tailing sites in Canada. There are three sites currently undergoing remediation, the Gunner Mine Site and Laredo Tailing Site which are located in Saskatchewan and the Doloro Mine Site located in Ontario. There are 10 decommissioned sites listed on the left of this figure. They are all located in Saskatchewan and Northern Te Territories and Ontario. I will now pass the presentation to Dr. Karina Lang to provide information 
and to walk you through the slides on the active and decommissioned mine sites. Good evening. My name is uh, Dr. Karina Lang, and I'm a senior project officer for the active remediation projects and decommissioned sites, or for most of them. The following section will provide you with information on performance highlights for the active remediation projects. The objective of active remediation projects is to establish long-term stable conditions, ensuring the safe use of the site for both current and future generations. Active remediations consi remediation projects consist of ongoing cleanup of activities using full-time staff and contractors, and of frequent monitoring and reporting on license requirements. The Legacy Gunner Mine and Mill site is located approximately 600 kilometers north of Saskatoon on the north shore of Lake Athabasca. The Gunner Mine began operations in 1955 and was closed in 1964. The ownership of the site then reverted to the province of Saskatchewan. The Saskatchewan Research Council is carrying out the remediation of the Gunner site, which was authorized by the Commission in January of 2015. The remediation project consists of the cleanup of mine tailings, waste rock piles, an open pit, mine shaft, and demolition debris. Following a public hearing in September of 2015, the Commission approved the partial removal of a license hold point that allows SRC to implement the remediation plans for the tailings area. In November of 2016 this year, the Commission approved the removal of the remainder of that hold point to allow for all remediation activities to take place. SRC's objective is to complete all remediation activities by 2023 and enter into a long-term monitoring and maintenance phase for approximately 10 years. The site is expected to be transferred to Saskatchewan's Institutional Control Program in 2035 upon approval by the Commission. The Laredo Tailings Management Site is located eight kilometers south of Uranium City, Saskatchewan. The Laredo Mill operated between 1957 to 1960 and was closed with minimal decommissioning in 1961. At the end of operations at Laredo, the uranium mine tailings covered an area of about 15 hectares, including some tailings that were submerged in the adjacent Nero Lake. The Saskatchewan Research Council is remediating the site on behalf of the province of Saskatchewan. At the end of 2015, SRC completed remediation of the Laredo site. This included liming of Nero Lake to raise the pH and covering the mine tailings with an engineered cover. This work took approximately two years to complete. In 2015, CNSC staff verified that remediation followed engineering design plans and that other remedia remediation measures were performing as expected. The next step is for the site to enter the long-term monitoring and maintenance phase, which will last for approximately 10 to 15 years. It is expected that the site will be transferred to the province of Saskatchewan's Institutional Control Program in 2030 upon approval by the Commission. The Deloro Mine Site is located approximately 65 kilometres east of Peterborough, Ontario. This site was an abandoned gold mine and later operated as a smelting and processing site where some of the wastes produced contained very low levels of radioactive waste. In 2009, CNSC issued the Ontario Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, MOECC, a license to remediate the Deloro site, which is valid until December 2016. MOECC has applied for a short-term renewal of this license. The remediation at the Deloro mine site was organized into three cleanup projects, the tailings area, the industrial area, the mine area, and the Young's Creek area. Remediation of the tailings area has been completed. Remediation of the industrial mine area is nearing completion, and remediation of the Young's Creek area is approximately 60% complete. The main contaminant of concern at the site is arsenic, and arsenic continued to be above CCME objectives in Young's Creek in 2015. There were no exceedances of any radionuclides in surface waters at or near the site in 2015. CNSE staff inspections verified that the constructed waste facilities 
complied with design objectives and met CNSC regulatory requirements. In July of 2016, MOECC applied for the conditional release of the Deloro site from CNSC's regulatory oversight. Public commission proceedings on this matter are planned for next year in 2017. This table shows the licensing and compliance effort from CNSC staff in 2015 for the active remediation projects. In 2015, CNSC staff spent 108 person days on licensing activities and 316 person, person days on compliance activities. There was one commission hearing for a license condition for the gunner remediation project in 2015. Additional compliance efforts were required for Deloro due to a CNSC order, which is discussed in more detail later in this presentation. CNSC staff performed six compliance inspections at the remediation sites. Findings resulting from these inspections were provided to the licensee immediately in preliminary report reports, followed by detailed inspection reports. All enforcement actions arising from these inspections were recorded in the CNSC Regulatory Information Bank and all items have been closed. For 2015, CNSC staff rated all applicable SCAs as satisfactory for the active remediation projects and decommissioned sites, except for Deloro Mine Sites Management System SCA, which received a rating of below expectations. This report focuses on radiation protection, environmental protection, and conventional health and safety, the three SCAs which cover many of the key performance indicators for these sites. For the gunner site, the safety and control areas for management systems, operating performance, and physical design were not rated because remediation activities had not yet begun and there were no workers full-time on site. This graph shows the maximum and average individual effective doses measured for workers at each of the three remediation projects in 2015. The maximum individual effective dose to a new was 1.35 millisieverts at the Laredo remediation project. The annual average individual effective doses and the maximum individual effective doses at the three sites were well below the annual limit of 50 millisieverts in 2015. CNSC staff's, staff's compliance activities verified radiation doses were kept alera and workers were being protected. CNSC staff rated the 2015 performance of all remediation projects for the Environmental Protection SCA as satisfactory. CNSC staff are satisfied that environmental protection programs for all remediation projects were effectively implemented and met regulatory requirements. The purpose of environmental monitoring at these sites is twofold. First, it serves to ensure the environment is protected during remediation activities, and second, Additional data is used as a baseline to measure the effectiveness of remediation performance verification. Lost time injury statistics are a key measure of licensee performance. There were no lost time injuries at any of the remediation projects in 2015. The rating for this safety and control area also considers occupational health and safety programs and their implementation on site and the workers' awareness of these programs. All sites maintained an effective occupational health and safety program that protects workers, contractors, and visitors to the site. The rating for conventional health and safety at all three sites was satisfactory in 2015. As mentioned, CNSC staff rated management systems at the Deloro remediation project as below expectations. Following the release of a non-radiological wastewater to the environment, CNSC issued MOECC in order to stop activity in the Young's Creek area and address issues related to water management in June of 2015. CNSC staff reviewed and assessed the circumstances leading to the release and determined the underlying cause to be linked to unclear roles and responsibilities and poor contractor oversight, areas covered under the management system SCA. 
MOECC complied with the order and following several follow-up inspections, CNSC staff determined that MOECC met all of the conditions of the order and that remediation work in that area could resume. Subsequently, in March of 2016, the order was closed. CNSC staff have continued to closely monitor this area to ensure the licensee continues to meet regulatory expectations. CNSC staff confirmed through site inspections that the situation at the site has significantly approved. This update closes Commission Action Number 8491 related to the Deloro order. In 2015, CNSC staff's compliance activities concluded uh, the following. All applicable SCAs were satisfactory, with the exception of Deloro. Radiation protection programs adequately controlled radiation exposures, keeping doses alera. Environmental protection programs were effective at protecting the environment, and conventional and health and safety programs continued to protect workers. The next part of the presentation focuses on the 10 licensed decommissioned uranium mine and mill sites in Canada. Activities at decommissioned sites consist of routine monitoring and maintenance activities, and in most cases there are no permanent staff on site. All sites, with the exception of Clough Lake and Beaver Lodge, are expected to remain under a CNSC license for the foreseeable future. The Beaver Lodge site is located in the northwest corner of Saskatchewan, north of Lake Athabasca. Mining and milling activities began at the Beaver Lodge site in 1950, with closure in 1982. Decommissioning commenced shortly after operations ended and was completed in 1985 to the standards in place at the time. Cameco has a 10-year CNSC license for Beaver Lodge site that expires in 2023. Although some concentrations are above CCME guidelines at some locations due to historical mining activities, the levels are generally stable or decreasing with time. Due to the legacy mining impacts and the size of Beaver Lodge Lake, there is no practical remediation option that would be able to meaningfully accelerate the natural recovery of Beaver Lodge Lake. In August of 2015, there was a release of turbid water into a shallow bay of Verna Lake during excavation of frozen waste rock. An increase in water flowing through the project area exceeded the capacity of the settling basin and sediment fences on the worksite, which led to water overtopping the silk curtain in Verna Lake. Additional controls were implemented and activities of the excavation were safely resumed. With the work now completed, water flows within the channel are stable and are estimated to be the same entering and exiting the channel. Five Beaver Lodge properties were released from CNSC licensing and entered into the Saskatchewan Institutional Control Registry in 2009. Chemical's goal is to eventually transfer all of the properties to the Institutional Control Program by 2023, which is also the end of their current license. CNSC staff will review the transfer proposal and present it to the Commission if deemed acceptable. The decommissioned Clough Lake Uranium Mine and Mill is located in northern Saskatchewan, approximately 75 kilometres south of Lake Athabasca and 30 kilometres east of the provincial border with Alberta. Clough Lake operated from 1981 to 2002. The majority of decommissioning activities were completed within five years of closure. Arriva had a 10-year CNSC license for the Clough Lake site, which is valid until July of 2019. Concentrations of radiological and hazardous substances in surface waters in 2015 were all below decommissioning objectives. CNSC staff continue to review monitoring results to confirm that water quality is stable or improving as predicted. Arriva may request the transfer of the Clough Lake site to the Saskatchewan Institutional Control Program at the end of their current license period in 2019. CNSE staff will review the transfer proposal and present it to the Commission if deemed acceptable. The midterm update in the ROAR, along with this presentation and Arriva's presentation, closes action number 8485.
The Port Radium Idle Mine Site is located in the Northwest Territories on the east, east shore of Great Bear Lake, about 265 kilometers east of the Dene community of Dillon. The Port Radium Mine was in operation for 50 years, from 1932 to 1982. The site covers approximately 12 hectares and was partially decommissioned in 1984, according to the standards at that time. In 2006, the Government of Canada reached an agreement with the local community and completed remediation of the site in 2007 and 2008 under a CNSC license that was issued by a designated officer to Indigenous and Northern Affairs Canada, INAC. This license is valid until December 2016. INAC has submitted an application to CNSC for the renewal of their license whereby INAC would carry out another 10 years of long-term maintenance and monitoring activities. The site itself consists of remediated mine tailings, closed mine openings and a landfill. CNSC concluded that in 2005, INAC maintained the site to a level that is consistent with CNSC requirements and remediation measures continue to perform as intended. Concentrations of contaminants in the major water body in the vicinity of the site, which is called Great Bear Lake, including the local bay, Labine Bay, were all well below Canadian Council of Ministers of the Environment Water Quality Guidelines for the Protection of Aquatic Life in 2015. The Ray Rock site, also located in the Northwest Territories, was formerly a uranium mine and mill. The former uranium mine and mill operated from 1957 to 1959 when the site was abandoned. The site was decommissioned by INAC in the late 1990s. The site consists of remediated mine tailings, closed old mine workings, a landfill and some demolition mining debris. A CNSC designated officer issued INAC a license for Ray Rock, which is valid until June of 2017. INAC has indicated their intent to apply for renewal of this license to allow for an additional 10 years of maintenance and monitoring activities at the site. CNSC concluded that INAC is maintaining the site to a level that is consistent with CNSC requirements and that remediation measures are generally performing well. Environmental monitoring data collected in 2014 and 2015 showed that water quality in down gradient lakes were below CCME water quality guidelines. The Agnew Lake Mine is located about 25 kilometers northwest of Nairn Centre, Ontario. The former uranium mine site was decommissioned and monitored by Kerr Addison Mines from 1983 until 1988. The site was then turned over to the province of Ontario in the early 1990s. A CNSC designated officer issued the Ontario Ministry of Northern Development and Mines, MNDM, a license for Agnew Lake, which is valid until January 2021. For the foreseeable future, the site will remain under long-term monitoring and maintenance. MNDM measures surface water concentrations at several locations around the site every two years. The last reported measurements were submitted to CNSC in 2014. CNSC staff reviewed the results and found that contaminant concentrations in water bodies in and around the site were below CCME water quality guidelines. During the 2015 CNSC staff inspection, Staff verified that the licensee performed maintenance work on the dams consistent with Canadian dam safety requirements, issued an action notice to repair the cover on the mine tailings after observing some portions of the cover were thinning, and requested an update to the gamma survey of the site after noticing some hunting activity was taking place on the site. MNDM has complied with all requests and maintenance on the cover is scheduled for completion in 2017. CNSC staff concluded that MNDM has maintained the, love, the site consistent with CNSC regulatory requirements. The Madawaska site is a legacy uranium mine site located near Bancroft, Ontario, that operated between 1957 to 1982 and was decommissioned in the 1980s. The site includes the footprint of the mining operation, a number of capped and sealed openings, 
underground workings, and two tailings dams. EWL Management Limited is the licensee. A CNSC designated officer issued a license which is valid until July 2021. For the foreseeable future, the site will remain under long-term monitoring and maintenance. Under their CNSC license, the licensee performs environmental sampling. Concentrations in some water bodies adjacent to the site exceeded the CCME water quality guidelines for uranium in 2015. These measurements are consistent with those from previous years. For example, on the figure you can see the highest value measured was 49 micrograms per litre in Bow Lake, which can be compared to the water quality guideline of 15 micrograms per litre. CNSC staff reviewed these results and concluded that uranium concentrations are historic and from historic practices, but have remained stable over the past 10 years. And the risk assessment is still valid, which states there is no risk to human health under any current use scenario of those water bodies. However, improvements to water flow and the cover system are currently underway at the Madawaska site to further limit migration of contaminants into the surrounding environment. In 2015, EWL undertook the first stage of this work to improve the cover and surface water management on the tailings management areas. The work is expected to further limit radiation from the tailings, improve local surface water quality, and reduce future maintenance. Bycroft is located about two kilometers west of Cardiff, Ontario. Barrett Gold Corporation is the owner and licensee of the site. The Bycroft facility was constructed to contain tailings from mining operations that were carried out at the nearby Bycroft mine, which operated from 1956 to 1962. The uranium tailings stored in the Bycroft tailings storage site resulted from processing low-grade uranium ore at the Bycroft mine. Remediation work has included vegetation of exposed tailings in 1980 and upgrading of dams in 1990 and 1997. A CNSC-designated officer issued Barrick Gold a license for Bycroft, which is valid until February 2021. For the foreseeable future, the site will remain under long-term monitoring and maintenance. The Bycroft site has an environmental sampling program and the results were provided to CNSC in 2015. Water quality sampling is carried out every five years at the site. Water sampling of the site did occur during the 2015 field season. CNSC staff reviewed the results and concluded that all except one on-site location for uranium surface water samples met the CCME water quality guidelines. However, concentrations for all contaminants were well below CCME water quality guidelines in the receiving environment. The Dino mine property is located at Farrell Lake, about 30 kilometers southwest of Bancroft, Ontario. The mill circuit at Dino operated between 1958 to 1960. The property consists of an abandoned sealed underground uranium mine, a mill which has been demolished, capped openings, a tailings area, one dam with a tow berm, and various roadways. The site is managed by EWL Management Limited. They hold a CNSC license for Dino, which has been issued by a designated officer, and the license is valid until January 2019. For the foreseeable future, the site will remain under long-term monitoring and maintenance. In 2015, CNSC staff found that the site was well managed and maintained. Water sampling of the site occurred during the 2015 field season. CNSC staff reviewed the results and concluded that all locations for uranium surface water samples met CCME water quality guidelines. Uranium mining occurred at Elliott Lake from 1956 to 1996. Decommissioning occurred from 1992 to 2002 when all mine structures were removed and tailings were managed in what's called tailings management areas. There are 12 mines and 10 tailings management areas at these sites. Two licensees manage the Elliott Lake sites, Rio Algum and Denison. There are three indefinite CNSC licenses, one for Rio Algum and two for Denison, for the sites for long-term monitoring and maintenance. 
Denison has requested that their two licenses be combined into one. Rewelcome Limited and Denison conduct site-specific and regional environmental programs, operate effluent treatment plants, and inspect and maintain the sites in the Elliott Lake area. The long-term plan for the site, which is greater in, in more than 200 years, is to reach a state where reliance on water treatment can be reduced. There were no exceedances of CNSC license limits in 2015 for these sites, and downstream water quality remained below CCME water quality guidelines. CNSC staff verified upgrades to some local dam structures and water treatment facilities uh, met regulatory requirements during the 2015 inspection. Rio Algum and Denison Mines jointly submit a State of the Environment Report which is a compilation and assessment of all environmental monitoring data around the sites for a period of five years. The most recent SOE covers from 2010 to 2015, and this report was submitted to CNSE staff in early 2016. A status update to the Commission for the decommissioned Elliott Lake sites is due coincident with this five-year status of the environment report. Therefore, a status update for the Elliott Lake sites will be part of the 2016 Regulatory Oversight Report for Uranium Mines and Mills Remediation Projects and Decommissioned Uranium Mine Sites. On May 24, 2016, Denison Mines Limited informed the CNSC staff that a small bushfire had occurred near its licensed area. The Elliott Lake Fire Department and Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry responded and extinguished the fire. The fire had no radiological impact, nor did it cause any impact to the health and safety of workers or the public. However, there was some damage to the local trees. CNSC staff updated the Commission at a public meeting about this matter in June of 2016. A final report was submitted in July of 2016 by the licensee to CNSC staff and confirmed that the response to the incident was well coordinated and that lessons learned have been implemented. This slide shows the Commission the area where the fire occurred. The photo on the left was taken by CNSC staff on May 31, 2016, one week after the fire. The photo on the right shows the same area in November of 2016. CNSC staff confirmed that the vegetation is recovering well. This update closes the Commission Action Number 8576, which requested an update from CNSC staff on the Denison Fire event. This table presents CNSC staff's licensing and compliance effort for all of the decommissioned sites in 2015. CNSC staff performed a total of eight compliance inspections at these sites. Findings resulting from these inspections were provided to the licensees in detailed inspection reports. All enforcement actions arising from the findings were recorded in the CNSC Regulatory Information Bank to ensure all enforcement actions are tracked to completion. CNSC staff reviewed and verified that the licensees' corrective actions taken were appropriate and acceptable. All non-compliances or enforcement actions issued in 2015 are considered closed by CNSC staff. For 2015, CNSC staff rated all applicable SCAs as satisfactory for the decommissioned sites. Uranium and mine and mill sites that have been decommissioned are, as mentioned, in the long-term monitoring and maintenance phase. In general, given the limited nature of on-site work, outdoor setting, low radiation levels following remediation activities, the potential for radiation exposure to workers and the public is very low. Based on each site's risk assessments and CNSC mod monitoring data for all decommissioned sites, CNSC staff conclude that levels of exposure are much lower than regulatory limits. The doses for all news performing monitoring, maintenance or visits to the site were well below CNSC regulatory dose limits in 2015. The SCA rating for radiation protection for all decommissioned sites was satisfactory in 2015. 
This graph shows the maximum and average individual effective doses measured for nuclear energy workers at each of the sites during 2015. The maximum dose occurred at Madawaska in 2015, and this was due to some of those maintenance activities discussed earlier on the tailings cover. The, average, the annual average individual effective doses and the maximum individual effective doses at the sites were all well below the annual limit of 50 millisieverts in 2015. CNSE staff's compliance activities verified radiation doses were kept alert at these sites and workers are being protected. The safety and control area of environmental protection is a key indicator for the effectiveness of past remediation measures at the site and is highlighted for each site in this report. All decommissioned sites have an environmental monitoring program to ensure the continued protection of the environment and ongoing performance of remediation works. Once the long-term environmental objectives for a site have been met, these sites may be released into institutional control or conditionally released from CNSC oversight. The rating for environmental protection at all sites was satisfactory in 2015. All sites maintained an effective occupational health and safety program that protects workers, contractors, and visitors to the sites in 2015. The rating for conventional health and safety at all sites was satisfactory in 2015. I will now pass the presentation to Ms. Haiti Tadros for the concluding remarks. So Haiti Tadros for the record. Uh, so for 2015, based on CNSC staff compliance activities, we conclude that all applicable safety and control areas are satisfactory given the activities being carried out at these sites. Radiation protection practices adequately control radiation exposures, keeping doses alera. Environmental protection programs were effective at protecting the environment, and licensees' conventional health and safety programs continued to protect the workers that were there for the time. So this concludes our presentation, and we are available for any, any questions. Thank you.